Okay, this is, uh, this is part three of uh, my sharing with you my testimony of how I got saved. And, and I want this to be an encouragement to you. I want you to, I want to try to be uh, as brief as I can, and, but also uh, lay out the, the facts about how if someone really wants to know the truth, they can know the truth. Um, I share with you that, um, and, and I don't want to repeat everything that I've already said in the first two videos. So, uh, if you haven't heard in, uh, part one or two of this session, please go back and, and listen to those uh, videos. So I don't have to repeat everything, but, um, I do, do want to mention a couple things I have to, to, to make, if someone is listening to this video for the first time and hasn't listened to the others, but, um, when I got saved, it was in 1974. I shared with you that uh, um, at the time I was uh, just, uh, I'd been brought up and raised in the Catholic Church. Uh, I had stopped going to church. Uh, I really was very ignorant of the Bible. I did not really know, understand about being born again, being saved. Those terms I really wasn't even familiar with. Um, but at the time, at this time, uh, a friend of mine had given me a book, again, by Hal Lindsey called The Late Great Planet Earth. The book I read, and uh, what astounded me was the fact is that the book itself zeroed in on the nation of Israel, or Yasharel, and um, it talked about how that our Creator had uh, been dealing with that nation uh from the beginning when, when he made a covenant with Abraham and made certain promises to him um, that he would fulfill. And uh, some of those promises that he mentioned were the fact is that uh, if they uh, obeyed his commandments, followed him and didn't seek after other gods, that he would bless him and his nation. They would be blessed wherever they went and that he would uh, be their God he would um, be their protector, provider. and But he also told them that if they disobeyed him and they started searching after other gods, that he would, you know, scatter them. And um, But he also prophesied that he would bring them back in the latter days. And so when I read this in 1974, um, all these things, as far as Israel uh, becoming a nation again in 1948 after being dispersed for over 2,000 years, really got my attention because no other nation has been scattered like they were and dispersed as a nation and then come back as a nation in 1948. And then in 1967, they regained the capital, their capital, Israel, uh, Jerusalem, as their capital. And so this was in only about seven years from that time frame of 1967. So all this was fresh in the news. I was aware of that. And, but, I, but in the book, he pointed out the scriptures in the Old Testament where these things were prophesied and foretold. And these books were written two to 3,000 years ago. So that in itself astounded me. And so that began my search of searching to know him, know that, you know, that I knew that I knew for a fact in the Bible had to be true. So it first of all created a desire for me to, to learn the Bible and to understand the Bible. Um, so, but my concept, uh, as I shared with you, being brought up and raised in the Catholic church was that uh, I needed to uh, clean my life up. I needed to stop sinning. I needed to start going to church. I need, you know, all these things were in my mind. That's only, only, uh, the only thing I knew to do in order to know the creator, because that was my overwhelming desire at that point. Now, I didn't really think of myself as a sinner and that I needed to be saved. These terms I really were not familiar with. Um, but I knew that my life was empty and that I felt there was an emptiness. And, and um, as this process began to happen. I mentioned to you that this just didn't happen over one week. It happened over about three or four months period of time. And the, but the process started and, and I, and the hunger was there. And the scripture says that, uh, when you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. And so I began to seek him and I began to, uh, do what I only knew to do. And that was to, 
to, like I said, go back to church and whatever. But, you know, I, I wasn't getting anything out of that when I went to church because my church was the Catholic church and, and, and uh, I wasn't hearing anything about the gospel. I wasn't really hearing anything about the scriptures. And, but I found myself, you know, going in, in the church, in that particular church, uh, during the daytime, a lot of time during the week. And I would go in there and just pray, be by myself. And as I shared with you, Yahuwah's presence, our creator was so strong. Um, it was like he was with me, you know, everywhere I went and I could sense his presence and I wanted, you know, to, to, to have a relationship with him. I, I guess I, I really just didn't understand what I needed to do. I, nobody came up to me and told me, well, this is what you need to do and whatever. But the, as this process began to unfold, uh, I share with you that uh, there was a conscious decision in my part. I remember being in my bedroom uh, one afternoon and it just really, you know, sort of came to me that, you know, that I would do anything to know him and, and whatever I needed to do, I wanted to do that. And um, it was like, you know, he spoke to me and said, well, you know, that I was a little bit, I was too concerned with what other people thought. And if, and what I, if I really wanted to know him, I would, would have to abandon all that. In other words, I just needed to not let that bother me. And so I consciously did. I, that's what I decided. They didn't care what anybody thought. So I began this process of, um, of reading my Bible. Um, and like I said, I share with you that uh, I find myself at home on a, even on a Friday night, you know, reading my Bible. And I began to really realize that something had totally happened because my desires totally changed 100%. I began, it, 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 it wasn't a labor for me to stay home and read my Bible. It was something I enjoyed doing and wanted to do. Now, previously, every, like I shared with you, if uh, before this happened, if someone told me that I would be home reading my Bible on a Friday night, I would have laughed and told them that's crazy. Because I was just, I was like most people that don't know our Creator and that aren't saved and that, that are not born again. All my desires were to fulfill the desires of the flesh. And so I was constantly doing that. And like I said, as a young uh, single man, I would go out and go to the bars and, you know, try to meet women or whatever and, and, and have a good time drinking and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, my desires for that just totally went away. And I didn't really want to do that anymore. And I had a new desire. And um, so I knew something had happened to me. And... Um, to make to sort of wind this up, the fact is that I never went down and prayed the sinner's prayer like a lot of people do, and like a lot of people think that they have to do. I did not, you know, um, call in and and uh, you know and ask someone to pray for me or any of these things. You know, it was consciously myself surrendering to Him because I knew that the Bible was true, and because of that, I wanted to know Him, and He knew that. He knew that. And so he began to reveal himself to me. And, uh, and I realized that I was, uh, once this process happened to a point where my desires totally changed uh, and I knew something was different about me, um, I, I, I said to myself or said, you know, I thought, I said, I feel alive for the first time in my life. And I had not read the scriptures. I had not even read any scriptures uh, that stated that until later. But that those very words would come out of my mouth. I feel alive for the first time, and uh, and I was excited, and I, I felt I felt good. I felt you know, and but again, I did not pray a certain prayer. I didn't ask for forgiveness. I didn't you know, even though. You know, later as this process began to unfold, I realized that you know I was I was a sinner on my way to hell, <clears throat> but but I didn't I didn't consciously think about that at the time, and um, but it wasn't until I started reading the scriptures and reading the, in the book of Romans that I began to understand about salvation and about how to be saved, what how to, what it means to be saved and so forth, and I knew that I had already experienced that I had eternal life abiding in me. And so I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that I was born again. Now, I wasn't even familiar with the term born again. I didn't even know what, uh, that you could be born again. I didn't understand what it meant. When in John chapter three, 
Yahushua the Messiah said you must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of, of Yahuwah. But I did not uh, even know that at the time. But I'm sharing these things with you to help you to understand that it's not by cleaning up your life that's, that causes you to be born again. It's not you going to church that's causing you to be born again. It's not causing you to, uh, you know, just to say a prayer, sinner's prayer, or uh, in the Catholic Church, they have what they call the act of contrition. It's a it's a prayer that you're sorrowful for your sins. Well, that's, does it cause, that, that will not cause you to have eternal life. You have to believe in the one that the Father has sent. And so the belief, when I talk about belief, again, I'm not talking about a head knowledge of belief. I'm talking about something that you actually are tr truly trusting in. And I put my trust in the Messiah that he died for my sins. I began to recognize, like I said, that I was a sinner you know, who needed a savior. And uh, he saved me. He gave his, he gave his spirit unto me. And I was born again by the set apart spirit and nobody could take that away from me. And as I began to grow and, and, and understand the scriptures, you know, then I began to search for a church and finally got into a good church at the, after that and uh, started receiving from the pastors and that, that I was under and begin to grow spiritually. But uh, the main thing I wanted you to get out of this is to see that you may, if you understand and recognize this Bible has to be true because there's no way that the creator could have, uh, I mean, there's no, the creator proved himself to be true because he knows the, the beginning from the end or the end from the beginning. He, know, he knows what's gonna happen in the future and so he tells us in advance of what's going to happen so when it does happen we would have faith or uh, in confidence that he is our creator and so um with that said i hope this has helped some of you and uh, i want to start a new series and we're going to go in more detail in the, in the next few, few videos that i'm going to do about what it really means uh in more depth about once you have received the messiah what is actually taking place and to build your confidence to know that that uh, we have passed from death unto life and that's what happened to me that day that that, uh, that he came into my heart came into my life and I knew that I was alive forevermore and so thank you for your being willing to listen to this I hope this has blessed you and uh, we'll pick up on our new series coming up on our next video thank you again and shalom